Hi, I'm Bob Cozy. You probably know me from the Modern RPG Language or my recent RPG TNT books. Also, I run the RPGWorld.com website, which has a wonderful forum that a lot of people visit every day. You should check it out. In addition, I host RPG World Conference and Showcase that's held in Las Vegas in May of each year. I hope to see you there. This video is part of a brand new item that we've created called Subprocedures and Service Programs on DVD, a training series for RPG programmers. I hope you enjoy it. And then remember to order it right here on RPGWorld.com. Subprocedures and Service Programs. I'm Bob Cozy. Subprocedures 101, an overview of subprocedures and service programs. So what are subprocedures? Subprocedures are a routine that's called by another routine, whether it's the mainline calcs or another subprocedure. If the mainline calcs call routine A and routine A calls routine B, then routines A and B are both considered subprocedures. In a normal program with mainline calcs and several subprocedures, the mainline calcs usually call into the subprocedures, but the subprocedures themselves can also call other subprocedures. You can also store subprocedures in service programs, and when you do that, you can still call to, into the subprocedures from the mainline calcs, but subprocedures, since they can call other subprocedures, inside the service program, subprocedure T2 can call T4, and T3 can call T4. And this gives you the ability to extend RPG by packaging things in a service program. In order to get to the procedures in the service program, you can actually call from the mainline calcs or subprocedure in your own program to a subprocedure inside of a service program. So you can call from the program to the service program and that's okay. But calling from the service program back to a subprocedure in your program, that's not okay. Subprocedures are a hybrid of programs and subroutines in that they have characteristics from both. They do replace subroutines, but they do not replace programs. Subprocedures can be called implicitly or explicitly. They're called similar to built-in functions. Within an expression, you can implicitly call a subprocedure. They can be called similar to a program. Using the call B op code, you can call a subprocedure just like you do an old fixed format program. But the call P op code is preferred, and it's used when calling a subprocedure using free format or the extended RPG specification. Subprocedures accept parameters, and those parameters can be modified, just like a program to program call allows you to modify parameters. But subprocedures can also return a value to the caller. This is a separate, sort of a hidden parameter that can be returned from a subprocedure to the caller. So you can say x equals my routine, and my routine would return some value that's then assigned to the variable named x. They also provide isolation from the rest of the code in the program. So fields, data structures, files, all those things can be isolated within a subprocedure, and these things are called local variables, or in the case of files, local files. The benefits of subprocedures are that you can extend RPG4. It's like writing your own built-in functions. Subprocedures are very similar to built-in functions. They don't have all the benefits of built-in functions, but they do provide about 80% of the capabilities of a built-in function. But you get to write these yourself. So they can be used in expressions just like built-in functions. They can return values just like a built-in function. And they can be defined separate from the program. You can group subprocedures into modules, store those modules in another part of the program or in a service program object. Now programs as we knew them we had mainline calcs with a bunch of code in it and subroutines typically. This is a typical RPG3, early RPG4 program design. You have mainline calcs, you have 
zero or more subroutines, although typically you do see subroutines in just about every RPG program, and you have no subprocedures. Programs today with RPG4 look more like this, where you have mainline calcs, you may have some subroutines because programs have been migrated, and you have zero or more subprocedures. So you can have both subprocedures and subroutines in the same program. Where we're trying to get to is to have programs that still have mainline calcs, but then have only subprocedures, no more subroutines. And this is the challenge for the RPG programmer. A really good application design allows a program to contain multiple modules. One module has the mainline calcs isolated from the rest of the program. And then it has one or more additional modules in it that have all the subprocedures needed to allow the application to perform what needs to be done. This is the optimum design. Of course, we can go one step further and we can move those subprocedures and the modules they're contained in into a service program. Then the main application consists of just one source member. It has only mainline calcs and it connects to a service program that has all the subprocedures necessary in order for the application to work. I'm back. Remember, this is only a demonstration of what's available on the entire DVD, Subprocedures and Service Programs. It's a great training DVD that goes into a lot more detail than in this overview. I hope you'll buy it. Visit rpgworld.com for more information or to order. Okay, you can continue now.